Thank you. We are thankful to ma'am for sharing her experiences with Ramana Rosa. Now, we have with us Srinivas Chakravarti Garu, who is our Managing Director and CEO of Sri City Union Finance Limited. I would like to invite him to share his experiences. Uh, I Telugu. I Telugu. I Telugu. problem Telugu. Okay. So. So. Ajay sir, andhra ne Telugu ne matar. Andhlo nu Sachinan garu, Raman, I mean, mana Kumar garu, vilanta, anta eloquent ke English lo matla din tarata. English lo matla to ani thi chala foolish ko under ne ani anpi chinni. Andhra ne Telugu ne matar tha. So, padhal ki, sahacharil ki, andhra ki namaskar alu. Amar Sri Ram City Union Finance, not Sri City Finance. Okay, Raman Raghur, first to agenda lo, you know, me profession guru inch matlaad man naru, but profession guru inch matlaad man du, 90, sorry, 83 to 86 articles chesa hon. Qualify avale adu. So, adho ka load kind atla ondu pe inde patki. Work lo, once work lo join hain taro aata, pressure of work, Qualify check, asal ayang ke buku seti itu ane itu ane dah kuzar la. Kani ikir ni nerch kuna di mood sahaja la nerch kuna di. Iwal ke gula nak profesion lo, nak work lo, every day. Inca useful gane unde naku. Oka commitment to time, commitment to customer and endless discussions on clients, our clients books, endless discussions. We had a very nice, beautiful um, team at that point of time. We had a hall on Amar, then Kesha Murgesh, Srinivas, there were a lot of people. Uh, and uh, the discussion, there were always a lot of discussions on, um, basically, when you are preparing for your exams, are rigor. I think CA, what CA pre prepares you for is that rigor of spending long hours, focus, a particular topic may the focus chat to me any near piece study adi actual gonna it has become really useful for my career no no okay training in the no no chit fund company lo join in a pretty chalaman the knuckle friends under a chit fund company lo chit fund and a chala chana shoe pundas manalaki cheat fund on it to come out later so but i have what i've seen is margaret's audit chase on ramon raga guidance lomeo i've realized that you all me room in the financial market, there is a lot of instruments in the day. The latest fad is your BNPL, buy now, pay later. At the end of the day, the people are unfortunate. So, the people are unfortunate. The people are unfortunate. The people are unfortunate. The people are unfortunate. Sir? The people are unfortunate. Adi tarawat sir, main juice kunta hai. Dabba atla dhis kira hale nez, main juice kunta. Mundu meir dhis kunta maada ghir, karshu patta nene dhan me dhe. That's all today's financial world works. Versus you look at our very, very traditional instrument of a chit fund business. Unfortunately, income and chala educated people could they don't understand what is a chit fund business. It's a collective scheme. Mope and alpha mandi kalisi save chase kunedi or borrow chase kunedi and alabe mandilo. It is one of the best instruments. Nenu actual guy have traveled across the world. Uh Sri Ramlo work chatamola. I have met professionals across the world, finance professionals. Then, well in short, Allah, any country, I keep talking about chit fund business and how chit fund is good for the uh, lower strata of the society, how it will help people. You know, people get very impressed reading this and then they'll say it's a beautiful instrument, but how will it work? So, fortunately, we put a chit fund locator, there are a lot of people who are try, trying to digitize this instrument, take it across to, uh, I would say, uh, to urban areas, so in particular, guy, put me in younger generation, lo software, software, in the I think, it could not team, lo, ne, sakam, mandi, kasal, chit fund, ante, ante, telli, do, chala, cheap, ka, anpis, sadi, but please understand, it's a very, very wonderful instrument for a, a lower middle class and middle class people, without any burdens, without any of this harassment, 
that we do as a financial institution. So as a banker, you know what? Bankers are used to be called at one point of time, bankers used to be hated and bankers used to be called at 363 people. That is borrow at 3%, lend at 6% and go home at 3, 3 o'clock. Because relax bankers have negative opinion. It's also, you know, bankers are also hated because people don't want to pay back. Chalamandi experience la, I keep talking to customers. In sir, Miru, you are so educated, you are doing well. Why are you delaying payments? And this kunna put chala enthusiastic on today. Tirigi paycheck and today, kuncha kasang anpesa thendi. That's my first experience when I joined the Chitfund business. Okay, executive engineer told me this. In sir, me position lo ande me itla just na ro ande tirigi wal ande kasang sir double. So it's a it's a, a profession that has so many. Faces, but end of the day, if you look at today in the country, there is no financial service that doesn't touch your life. Either you are a borrower or a saver, or you have an insurance. Your vehicle has insurance, or your life has insurance. The money, in, the money in that you pay to the insurance company goes into investments, goes into a stock market, funds companies, and builds the nation's wealth. So, a very, very crucial, important component of your of our country, GDP is in the financial services and it is the second largest employer in the country. Financial services are the second largest employer, so there's, it produces a lot of employment. So, uh, of course, as a fraternity, as a chartered account, as a chartered accountant, as a professional, our jobs, or your jobs, so I'm not, qualify you are the guys who are going to audit me, so your jobs are becoming more and more difficult every single day because of the improvement in technology and the regulator's lens on the chartered accountancy profession on how you, how you are reporting, how you are auditing your books. Your life is becoming much more and more tougher for a chartered, for compliance basically. It's, it could be a chartered accountant, could be a company secretary. Compliance focus is becoming very, very high. So you guys need to be very careful. And you know that most of the fiction is written on a spreadsheet. So most of the companies actually write a lot of fiction on spreadsheets and bring it out into public. So you cannot rely on what the company is talking about, so you know that. So I mean, we have seen enough of those cases even when we are auditing. So uh, with all due respect to our elders, but then it is a part of life. So unless you guys need to be very, very careful on what you are reporting. So it, it, could, le it could actually uh, damage your career and your life. So be careful. That's what I, my advice is to the younger generation. There are a lot of fictional writers who have become, who chartered accountants who have become fictional writers. If you know Chetan Bhagat, the guy who wrote Three Idiots movie for the younger generation, you know he's a chartered accountant. See how well he's writing fiction. So <laughs> guys who are, on, who are in profession, is fine, but who are working today are b in companies lo work jaise chala mandu mane chartered accountant andar yeh fiction lo unnar. So one more sad news is today one of our fraternity, Mr. Rakesh Junjun wala passed away today. He's a chartered accountant. I'm sure most of you would know, or the younger generation should know that he is the one guy who has actually single-handedly created a positivity about the market, stock market in India when it is in dumps during the COVID time. So. I would like all of you guys to, or uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds of, you know, silence for his soul. So he's a very, very, the reason why I said, no, 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 it's okay, you can sit, you can sit. He is one reason why today there are a lot of, you know, foreign uh, investment was positive on in India. He single-handedly created a different impression on the country. He is a chartered accountant. We should be proud that He's come from our profession. So I think, uh, so I will ever be grateful for the three years that I've spent in Brahma and Company. Chala, uh, as I said, see, Nenu, uh, up back of the mind, I don't qualify for the time spent in the and I'm sorry, but at the same time, I never regretted that. What I've, Chala happy to feel in a vision of the matro, in three years, I could spend years in the career, 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 career
చాలా చాలా హెల్ప్ చేసింది సో ఐ కెన్ ఆల్వేస్ ప్రౌడ్లీ సే దట్ ఐఎమ్ హెడ్డింగ్ ది లార్జెస్ట్ ఎన్బిఎఫ్సి ఇన్ ద కంట్రీ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ మై అసోసియేషన్ విత్ బ్రహ్మ అండ్ కంపెనీ అండ్ వాట్ ఐవ్ లర్న్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ హియర్ సో ఐ విల్ ఆల్వేస్ బీ అ స్టూడెంట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్ అండ్ ఐ థ్యాంక్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ దట్ ఐ వర్క్ విత్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ and uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity thank you so much sir thank you sir and my sincere apologies for the mistake it is sri ram city union finance limited and it's a pleasure to have you here sir now i would like to introduce ca keshav murugesh he is a group ceo and member of board of directors of wnf He has been chairman of NASCOM between 2019 and 2020. He is a recipient of prestigious Chartered Accountants Business Achievers Award 2013. He has been honored as an outstanding CEO at the Asia Pacific Entrepreneurship Awards 2015. He has also won the India Disruptor of the Year Award at the CNBC TV18 India Business Leaders Award 2018. He served as an article student at Bremaya and Co Visakhapatnam during 1981 and 1984. He will be addressing us through a video recording. Good day everyone. Being in your midst is like homecoming for me. Bremaya and Company is the place where I trained and created a foundation for my professional career as many of you might know. Therefore as a prof- as a fellow professional and a colleague it really feels very good being in your midst shall we see who we are as chartered accountants from the lens of two great leaders chartered accountants are partners in nation building said our former president dr apj abdul kalam i need mbas for running my business but i need chartered accountants to teach them how to run the business said ratan tata another stalwart who needs no introduction both leaders had good reason to say what they did the uk based recruitment firm robert half came out with a very interesting statistic in 2019 their research found that 20% of the ceos in financial times stock exchange 100 or the footsie 100 Uh, were actually chartered accountants so here is our million dollar question how shall we carry on this distinction into the future from experience i can say this we are professionals with special knowledge and skill in how finance can be applied to business therefore i think we should use this knowledge to improve uh, what i call the status quo we should not shy away from big bold decisions and actions i am proud to say that i personally belong to the it bpm industry and this industry has been a game changing architect of the indian economy and employment in 2022 we recorded the highest ever growth of 15.5% to touch revenues of 227 billion that's equal to the defense budget of india with a direct workforce of 5 million 50% of whom are women and we are expanding rapidly in tier 2 and tier 3 locations of india creating new jobs we brought together the best of digital transformation hyper automation artificial intelligence machine learning innovation in different forms platforms and everything as a service model tech startups have surged and scaled tremendously you know the industry ramped up on operational excellence and efficiently addressed margin pressures we raised the levels of skilling and positioned the country as an acknowledged global hub of digital talent in fact as per the latest global cfo survey conducted by the uh, everest group around 49% of cfos are considering fast tracking digital adoption to improve productivity customer experience and control bpm companies like wns 
have been enabling CFOs across industries to digitally transform their functions. In the past so many years, finance and accounting you know, experts of the BPM industry have been working very closely with CFOs to help them tackle working capital as well as liquidity challenges, contain costs for them, ensure supply continuity, and at the same time, assess opportunities for growth and profitability. A little trivia from WNS, our full form of the acronym CFO is those who change future odds. Getting back to where we were, there are many opportunities in the IT BPM industry for specialists like accountants. Let's see a few instance, uh, instances here. You can harness humongous amounts of data and drive business turnaround through real-time, actionable business insights. You can look at uh, financial planning and analysis to decide the best course of action for companies. You can leverage analytics to find patterns in customer behavior and market trends to drive strategy. The cloud, big data, mobile, and social collaboration are today all converging to change how we consume information, share knowledge and experiences, and access products and services. It can hugely transform our role as a CA. For example, audit bots increase productivity and allow for more expansive risk coverage. Robotics and artificial intelligence equip us to harness large amounts of data efficiently, eliminate repetitive tasks, and freeze our time for strategic thinking. Cloud technologies promote ease of access, scalability, data sharing, and collaboration. Big data improves understanding of market conditions, forward planning, as well as risks. Cybersecurity identifies, assesses, and mitigates risks. AR and VR immersion enables a better sense of financial data. So the possibilities really are endless. With the integration of technologies such as AI, ML, and audit bots, the transactional analysis, including country-specific nuances, will primary, uh, primarily be performed by machines. As a 21st century CA lead, we should leverage forward-looking information that is more relevant for management decisions to drive organizational performance. It would really help if we understood in real time where value will be created and where it will be destroyed. Our role in building resilience and success will cover the entire gamut of enterprise performance management. Here is thanking warmly and wishing all of our leaders at Brahmayan Company the very best and a big congrats on the launch of our alumnus program. I look forward to meeting all of you very soon personally. Thank you, Keso Murugesh, sir, for your valuable message. Now, I would request Koteshwar Rao, sir, to play the video of S. Nagesh, who is associated with our firm from 1986 to 1988. Hello, everybody. It's always a pleasure and gives inexplicable joy when you visit your grandparents and relatives at the native place as much as you would get by visiting the old school and sitting in those classrooms. The happiness has no bounds when you meet some of your revered seniors and peers. My humble pranams to Sitaram Egar, Ravi Shankar Gar, Prasanna Kumar Gar, P.S. Kumar Gar, Ramna Rao Gar, and all other dignitaries sitting there. Heart is flooded with emotions of all those shared happenings of the past. And this simply overwhelms misting the eyes. 
it is very difficult to isolate one single instance. As these are pearls strung together into a mala. I happened to be with Brahma and company for a short stint from 1986 to 1988, but the bonding and the association is covalent. Worked in many corporates and finally chose to set up my own consultancy firm specific to project finance and finance consulting, a road less traveled those days. It is true, internet and various search engines have helped data mining to a great extent, but to scale down to the micro data to a minor scale with location specific applicability and history of the industry in the past and present, the role is more than an astrology. Numbers can be crunched, projection with sensitive graph can be furnished with many tools that are available, but it is the knowledge, the skill of reading the near future, the country and global economic and political scenario. One Russian-Ukraine war has queried the Western economic system, which was not expected. One COVID has turned the economy upside down. The financial consultant has to not only understand the capability of the promoters, stakeholders, other technocrats who will be associated with the project, but all the components that go into the production cycle, the price escalation embargo, tax impact war, epidemic and pandemic, etc. There has to be answer for some unanswerable questions. One of the biggest challenges any business faces is sustainable growth. The pace of change in today's economic landscape poses a risk to the foundation of any business cutting across sectors and industries. Financial consultants have played a vital role in steering businesses to the unfamiliar terrain of dynamic markets. This is all the more true for small and medium enterprises, for a sector working on a limited budget, but it has become more important for SMEs to hire financial consultants for efficient financial management. Lack of robust financial planning and internal accounting is one of the primary reasons why SMEs often burn out. Irregular bookkeeping also defeats the purpose of a long-term expansion. Hiring a chartered accountant often serves as life support to many SMEs and the CAs will ensure a reliable overview of the financial health. With their expertise in smart financing management, CAs often contribute to turning the business profitable, keeping a check on cost and helping in adapting to the changing economic environment. Financial consultants can play a key role in increasing companies' bottom line profit. With their expertise, they can work together, managing the cost of capital by adjusting prices and cutting down expenses. If provided access to the financial data of the company, a consultant can guide SMEs in identifying market challenges and determining solutions for them. In the current fluctuating business environment, along with the need to address the persistent credit paucity faced by the SME sector, well-assessed financial guidance is important, in the absence of which SMEs might end up steering away from an optimal usage of available resources. Financial consultants can play 
an integral role in identifying SME short and long term financial goals, helping them significantly improve their chances to survive in today's market. In nutshell, a financial concept can act as a catalyst to drive SMEs towards profitability and growth of the business. As Sri Ratan Tata puts it, I need MBA for running my business, but CA to teach them how to run the business. And the funny side, what is the similarity between a successful chartered accountant and a Miss Universe? Both are conscious about their figures. It is proper to conclude that today the CA's role is much more complex than that of a well-known doctor or surgeon. They can quote the element of God chance, whereas a CA can quote good chance because whatever present is conceived and delivered by them which is supposed to be perfect. My wish for you is to stand out in the crowd, become more memorable, and close more business so that we also become a part of the growth story and contribute to the economy and the nation at large. Thank you. Wish you all a happy Independence Day. Jai Hind. Thank you, Nagesh Garu, for your valuable message. Now I request CA Satyawani Garu, who is associated with our firm from 1987 to 1990, to come to the desk and share her experience. Good afternoon, everybody. My association with Brahma and Company is a memorable to, uh, memorable to everyone, even Raman Raghar is saying. All, since morning, everybody is saying, uh, Raman Raghar always speaks about you only. Everybody is saying. It's a very memorable term I spent in Brahma and Company. Apart from practical training, I received guidance and the uh, examination preparation from Babu uh, for uh, income tax paper. And when, wherever I presented the papers in the students' conference, I used to show to Raman Rao Garu. After he edited all the, I used to send the papers. And those papers are published as it is after he edited the papers. So that was a continuous support guidance I received from Raman Rao Garu for the extra activities of the institute activities. And in the year 1989, my students' association was formed in Visakhapatnam. That time, the my managing committee members uh, asked for one girl from to come forward. That time, Mandragaru recommended my name. So I became part of the management, managing committee of the Students Association and active, uh, participated in the student activities in uh, Visakhapatnam branch. And uh, I worked even after articleship till March 92 as a uh, paid assistant and after married to Kamesh Kumar, CA Kamesh Kumar. His father is also chartered accountant and set up his office in 1960 in Aurangabad. I moved to Aurangabad and joined our family concern with my in-laws firm as a partner and practicing since then. See, uh, continuing my interest and passion in the institute activities in Aurangabad also, I got elected as, a, uh, as first female member in the managing committee of the Aurangabad branch. I served that branch. And there also I was given the task of forming Students Association, getting, setting up the branch of the Students Association in the Aurangabad. That time it was not existing. So I formed the association, activated it. And when uh, this is a very lengthy process of setting up the branch of Vikasa Western India in Students Association in Aurangabad. We have to get it approved in WRC, and then it will go to Central Council. Then through the central council, a gadget notification is to be passed, then the branch status will come. So to, for doing this, the then WRC chairman, Mr. Muttam Agrawal, he co-opted me in the WRC council in the students committee. And he, that time I was treasurer in the branch, uh, also doing chairperson to the student association. 
and he co-opted me only for the task completing this task of getting gadget, gadget notification of setting up the branch in Aurangabad. So he told me that time that is now you have to play your role in the council and get it resolved the issue. So I was simultaneously playing the three roles, treasurer, students association, and again in WRC students committee. There I could I with this I could convince the council and get it resolved it and we, I got, we got the gadget notification for setting up the branch. Thereafter, I am continuously getting co-opted in the WRC. I am co-opted in Corporate Governance Committee in 2010. Th in that, in, during my tenure in that year, the agenda was, in that year, due to various corporate fraud, many members are submitting resignation to the independent directorship or directors to the, in the listed companies. So to motivate and encourage the encourage the members, so we have initiated the process of setting up the guidelines on the roles and responsibilities of independent directors so that effective corporate governance can be done by the members without any fear of any uh, without any fear of these frauds and scams which are going on in the co corporate sector. So th th that was initiated in when I was in the corporate governance committee. Thereafter, I was also uh, co-opted in Cooperative Societies Committee and other various committees have uh, done. And even FPFD courts also instituted as we tried to do an awareness program for the corporate sector in, the, in Mumbai, but the response was not received for, uh, get, uh, for that awareness program, mobilizing all the corporate leaders to attend this program. And the response for this FPFD program was very, very poor from the corporate sector. So from, from time to time, I was inducting in so co-opting so many committees in the WRC. Right now, I am in Women Empowerment Committee now. In this year, I am co-opted in WRC uh, Women Empowerment Committee, working on this women programs and all that. <laughs> so with these few words, I thank Raman Raghav. He, he specifically told me that you have to speak on your role in the institute activities. So I have spoken about this. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your experience. Our alumni have not only flourished in India, but also have successful careers overseas. One among them is CA Vidya Sagar, who is a managing director credit at Apollo Global Management, an American global private equity firm. He is a qualified chartered accountant in India, as well as a certified public accountant in US. Served as article assistant in Brahmaya till 2000. I would like Koteshwar Rao uh, to play the uh, message from Vidya Sagar. Namaste and good afternoon to everyone and present. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say a namaste to Sita Ramal Garu, Raman Rao Garu, Prasanna Kumar Garu, and Ravi Shankar Garu, and all other dignitaries, uh, partners, and others present. Uh, I definitely certainly wish I was there, but unfortunately, I have to not be. Um, a very brief introduction to myself before uh, before I speak about uh, my PMK experiences. Uh, my name is Vidya Sagar Purvasi. Um, I grew up in Vizag and uh, did my articles and CA at BMCO um, and completed my articles in Brahmayamco in uh, 2000 and my CA. Uh, Raman Rao Garu was, was, was the anchor of all my three years of articleship and um, I am sure as most of you will agree, he inspires and terrifies uh, students in equal measure. Um, and I had a, a, a great time during my three years there. Uh, I then subsequently left the country and spent time in the US and UK, Singapore, Hong Kong, and now um, most recently and in Sydney, um, where I'm working as a managing director uh, for Apollo Global Management. Uh, which is a 500 billion plus uh, US dollar uh, automotive asset manager. Um, and I have a mandate uh, covering Asia Pacific in the aircraft business. Uh, at some point next year, I'll be moving to Singapore doing the same role, um, uh, but, but covering Asia Pacific out of Singapore. Um, if I reflect back on my times at uh, Brahme it, you know, it's been 20 plus years, but some of the fondest memories I have um, go back to, to that period in my life. Uh, I, I remember all the times that I spent with people like PSR, um, who I, I hope is, is, is here and he was a great teacher for us. 
my first senior and my first ever day at Anita Kamit and Patnaik and a lot of friends since uh, Suresh, Jagdish, uh, Prakash and, and, and countless others. And if, if I think through those times, it's a fairly unique career and profession that we're in where from day one, the firm and Sita Rana Garu and Raman Rao Garu are trusting us at 18 or 19 to go and represent them in front of clients. And I think it's a very unique profession that allows people as young as me and, and several others to represent a firm with the pedigree and class that Rama Aramco has at such a young age. Um, and I'm also conscious of time, so maybe I'll just summarize. If I look back and, and you know, the things that I learned from the firm, the things that I still try and cherish and keep in mind, there are probably three lessons that I would take away from, from all my times there. The first is, you know, respect your group, which I suspect I, I don't always um, keep up to and, um, and, and maintain to the same level as Raman Rao Garu demonstrates every single day. The second is an importance of a work ethic. And I don't mean just working hard or working smart. I think the thing that always struck me was the, the promises you make to clients and, and the clarity with which you execute. Um, I think that always struck me with the discipline with which we had a Friday, um, weekly Friday session on what did we promise to do last week? Have we achieved it? How are we going to do better next week? Uh, sounds very simple, but just that work ethic of keeping the discipline of delivering for clients. Uh, and the third is integrity. Um, because the minute the market and clients start trusting you, um, you're not in a good place. And I think the integrity that the firm has built over years and decades and, and generations um, is, is something that almost any organization would aspire to. Um, with that, I'll probably uh, end and say, I really wish I was there. I wish you all have a great day. And I hope to see some of you, all of you uh, soon. And namaste. Thank you, Vidya Sagar, sir. Now I request KV Pravin Kumar Pravin Garu, who is associated with our firm from 1999 to 2002 to come to the dais and share his experience. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. So, Almost every aspect which I wanted to talk has been already spelt out by a lot of my seniors. More specifically, Vidya Sagar, who just preceded now. So I think I, I can cut it short into about five, six words. One, my mentor, Mr. Ramna Rao Garu, here. He taught me one word, which has really stayed in my mind, which is inquisitiveness. While reading anything, while doing anything. And that helped me read through the Bayer Act of the Income Tax Act to pass my CA exam. And then he also taught me discipline, which I never followed while I was in my articles. I don't know whether I follow it today or not. Yeah, he tries to. Yeah, absolutely. But I think that helps a long way because there are only three things which stay for every one of us. One is a school, then is a college, and then is a retirement, which I don't know how it is. So school was there with a lot of memories. And then I never had the opportunity to attend college because I've done my CA foundation and entered into article with the Nine Ten. So that's all. So I think this is what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for, your, for sharing your experience. Now I request CA Vital Kasigaru who is associated with our firm from 1999 to 2003 to come to the dais and share his experience. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respected uh, Rita Ramegaru, who conveyed his blessings uh, to us virtually. Respected uh, Raman Rao Garu and uh, all the legends who are here, uh, at least I have uh, grown in the CA profession looking at uh, many of you. Mr. Srinivas Mohan, who was here, he is my first principal in the CA uh, articleship. I worked under him for a year under uh, CVR and Co. Mr. T.V. Ramana, I remember him because uh, my first flight journey to ONGC was with uh, Mr. Ramana. So 
I'll always remember you for taking me safely and bringing me back from Delhi. So I have seen uh, a lot of uh, the uh, the CA activity and whatever I am today. I think I should take this opportunity to place it on record that whatever I am today is because of the training and the mentorship that I received from this firm, especially from uh, Raman Rogaru. And uh, even today, the kind of uh, teachings that I received, I still uh, follow. I Even today, sir, even in the uh, world of technology, I, I look at the trial balance in hard copy. Like you, I put the initial on top. I put the date and time as to when the TV was generated. And when my uh, juniors ask me, why is it that you are still doing, I mention your name, that uh, this is how uh, we have been asked to do an audit and now on, I'm on the other side, I'm in the industry. Uh, so uh, it's also good to see a lot of you, uh, some of you who have worked with me, uh, some of my juniors are here. I also saw uh, Vidya Sagar, who is my uh, senior, and they have covered a lot of things uh, today, uh, especially when uh, uh, Vidya Sagar mentioned about uh, the discipline and inquisitiveness that Sir uh, taught us. He used to tell, Kutuhalam Pradarsin Chalra Naina. So I used to, I, I just came back from Calcutta. All my growing up years was in Calcutta. So I used to ask, what is Kutuhalam Pradarsin Chalra Naina? And then I realized that it is about curiosity. Look behind the numbers. That is something that uh, Sir taught. And uh, I also heard uh, somebody mention about his, uh, him being a terror. Of course, now uh, having passed the profession, I can take little bit of liberty with him, but at least those Saturday meetings were a terror. Uh, we were, uh, we used to secretly ask Suresh or uh, Chinna, who is here, Sar Urla Unnara, and uh, they used to say he is either in an ALCO audit or he is in Rajamandri for APPM. We used to feel very, very relieved that Saturday meetings will not be there, that 10 rupee notebook were used to write that will not be initial we were very satisfied so now i am taking the liberty sir to publicly declare in front of you that you did uh, terrorize uh, all of us coming to the specific uh, topic when uh, uh, vamsi uh, reached out to me in april and he said we are organizing an alumni function i was uh, in delhi i immediately uh, probably one of the first few people to have filled the uh, google form because I felt very happy that, uh, number four, that's the auditor speaking for you. It is four and not one. <laughs> so I immediately filled up the form. Sir also reached out to me. And a couple of weeks back, uh, he sent me a message, please call me when you are free. His messages I take very seriously. I immediately called him to ask what is the reason. And uh, then he asked, now uh, I said, yes, sir, my ticket is booked. I'm flying down for this session. And then I also took his advice, sir, what should I speak? And he said, you have almost reached two decades uh, in the industry. I will complete 18 years uh, with uh, this company, Science Limited. I joined immediately after my uh, qualification in 2003. And uh, uh, that is when uh, uh, the first couple of attempts, I did not pass the final. And I remember the first attempt, I did not pass the final. I took leave for two days uh, because I almost got a fever that maybe this profession is not for me. And then after two days, I, I met sir. And then he said only one sentence. No, firm membership certificate. This is exactly what he told me, and it happened. Sir, when I left the firm in August of 2004, exactly in this week, actually next week was my last working day, I had the membership certificate in my hands, and I showed it to him very proudly that this is purely because of your blessings that today, uh, whatever I am, is because of uh, your guidance and uh, mentorship. So sir mentioned that since you have spent considerable time in the industry, why don't you speak about uh, uh, the role of the profession, how it has uh, uh, turned in the industry. So what I did, sir, is uh, I took a liberty of changing just a couple of things. What I did was I did not specify IT industry uh, because I wanted this to be a much larger discussion. And I also made it a little bit more future uh, looking rather than saying what I experienced in the past. I think it's very relevant if I mention what is it in store for us in the future. Uh, I, on the fear of uh, sounding old, there are a lot of uh, young generation of uh, professionals, either they are students or they have just qualified. So I think this will be very relevant for uh, all of you. Uh, so keeping aside the age part of it, uh, 
Kote Saragaru, I'll trouble you with the uh, presentation. So what I will say is this is the, the role of the finance leader for the future. And uh, having seen two decades, nearly two decades in the industry, how am I going to see in 2030 probably what is the role of uh, uh, finance? So you need to keep uh, clicking, yeah. So I call it finance uh, disrupted, which means that what we are doing today will not be what we will do tomorrow. And there are certain uh, items which I wanted to uh, share with each of you. These are things which I see it on a regular basis, how I started the career doing Excel sheets consolidation in the year 2004 and how we do uh, consolidation and accounting today. There is a sea change. And I'm speaking from the perspective of industry. I think many of you will find these insights uh, very relevant for you either now or in the future. Uh, so how we have moved, is it pointer is there? I was feeling bad to trouble my senior Kota Saragar. Yeah, so how we have seen the finance getting disrupted and how we will see finance in, in uh, 2030, at least uh, say 10 years from now. One is we are as an industry moving from an annual budgeting to a dynamic forecasting, which means earlier we used to do a budget once a year and then we live with the uh, budget for the entire year. How we are moving now uh, in the industry is we are looking at a very dynamic forecasting. For example, you do a budget at 75 in the dollar in March and now at 80, it's, it's a completely different story. So we have moved away from the historical budgeting exercise to something which is very, very dynamic, at least in, in science we do uh, once a month, for example. Lead indicators versus lag reporting. If you see the annual report which gets printed and we print beautiful annual reports, 400 pages, but who reads it? Other than the color and the wastage of trees, is there anybody really concerned about what has happened 12 months back. I think people are now getting into what is it going to be in the future? I mean, look at the analysts that we have, the top investors. They are all worried about what is going to be in the next quarter or the next year. Nobody bothers what you have done in the last year. So that is another shift. The third is scorekeeper to strategic partner. When we started 20 years, 30 years, accountants were known to be bean counters, scorekeepers, number crunches, all these taglines were there. Today we are considered as strategic partners, which means that we are one of the engines who will drive the business forward. We are not just counting the P&L or printing the balance sheets. That's another uh, shift. The fourth one is new service delivery model, something which uh, Keshav also mentioned. In terms of how we are going to deliver, he mentioned about the costs, he mentioned about efficiencies. So no longer are the core operations with the organization. For example, we have outsourced all our uh, accounting operations to Accenture. We don't want to uh, do it, so it gives us significant uh, cost benefits. Mm -hmm. So that is a new service delivery model and gone are the days where you will have a 20, 30 accountants and then you will have 10 managers and then vice presidents. I don't think that's the delivery model of the future. Need for agil agility and speed of reporting. This again, at least in the industry from where I come from, there's always a race to publish the numbers. In fees on 11th for the quarter, why are we on 12th is a constant question that I am asked. So, of course, I don't have an answer to say why do we race for a number, but the agility and the speed at which we are going to report, that is going to get crunched over a period of time. The no longer uh, accounts will be finalized in June, July and all that. It is going to be 21 days, 30 days kind of a norm uh, going forward. Emerging new technologies, this again uh, Keshav presented in terms of artificial intelligence and bots and these kind of things. I mean, they're going to take significant uh, manpower out of the system. But again, the more we adapt ourselves to the new technologies, at least people need not be afraid of the jobs getting lost. But this is something which is the most important in this slide is anybody who says, I don't want to become technologically conversant, I think the future for them will be very dark. So it is important that we as professionals continuously upgrade ourselves to changing technology. And the last one is about speed in building uh, analytics. And this is connected to the strategic partner where it is not really numbers. You have to analyze and say what is the story behind the numbers. Now when we go to the uh, future of finance, and I've put four uh, imperatives uh, which we will see in the future. One is in terms of look beyond transactional activities which is people have to focus, professionals have to focus more on value adding activities rather than just 
what we used to do traditionally 20 years back. And that's going to be a very, very important shift in terms of how we are perceiving us as a chartered accountant, a CFO, or a finance leader, any person. It has to be value-adding activities and transactional activity. The next is in terms of help finance lead the data. And in all organizations, I think finance is the leader which manages the data. So here, very important that not only we maintain the quality and consistency, but we also ensure that data is flowing seamlessly between systems. So finance has to take that ownership of the information that is uh, generated in the system and information that is published from the system. The third is importance of decision making. And here, going back to the system of analysis, clearer insights, faster insights, and richer insights. So what are we going to convey? How fast are we going to convey? And how beautifully we are going to convey is the need for the future. And the way we give the insights to the outside world will automatically determine how good a finance professional we are. And the last one is about people and the delivery model, which I touched upon. No longer are we going to see any traditional model, hierarchy, pyramids, and those kind of things. Uh, we will get into a much more leaner uh, delivery model, which is going to be highly efficient, highly cost effective, highly automated. And definitely, we should make a look at this entire thing as an opportunity. Thank you very much. I may have taken a couple of minutes more, sir. But I thought uh, I'll share my uh, thoughts. Thank you, sir. And thanks for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, sir, for your insightful info. And yes, you are right. Uh, Ramna Rao, sir, is not the terror that he used to be once upon a time. Now I would, now I would like to call upon Sri A. Krishnamurti, who was associated with. Once again, I am interrupting. Now I think uh, 1:25 p.m. So, when do you want to break for lunch? No, two o'clock. Okay. No, there are. Uh, then, uh, then, then, uh, I take the liberty, as he said, uh, with health care, he's very ter he's terror and all that. So let me use that from car. So now we have three video recordings of still laptop. One is Sagar Kota, and then uh, Aditi Agrawal. Sorry, Nutan, uh, sorry. Uh, Ad Aditi Rikta. Yeah, Bharadwaj. And Sagar Kota, and then Nutan Agrawal. Those videos will be played, and Lakshmi Kant, ma'am, will speak. Ma'am, you can't escape. Huh? And then, if time permits, no. If it is before two, then Kamaraju, who has come all the way from Dubai. He'll speak, and Samin, uh, Murdula, etc., etc. Post lunch session is yours, including me. You should. So the little time, the my seat is dependent on my whatever, rather uh, my this thing is dependent on the time you give to me. Four o'clock is that? It we close. So now I take the liberty of uh, uh, taking uh, speak. Uh, Satyanarayanagaru, so let us do the accordingly. Huh? Pardon? I use my veto rights. Veto, veto rights to pay it to shall. Huh? So now, so you accordingly you change it. Hello. Hmm? Now I request a video of C. Aditi Bharadwaj to be played, who was associated with our firm from 2006 to 2008. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Aditi Bharadwaj. I uh, was with Ramya and Company from 2006 to 2009. 
pranam to uh, cv ramana rao sir sita ramaya sir and all the dignitaries there today uh, unfortunately i could not be there uh, but uh, i dearly remember all my friends and my colleagues from ramaya uh, to give you a little background i finished uh, ca in 2008 november and after that uh, I moved to Hyderabad for a year with Deloitte and then after that I was in <coughs> Bangalore for another 4 years with a tax firm and then moved to transfer pricing in PwC then after 5 five, five and a half years realized corporate life is uh, not my cup of tea and uh, I used to enjoy teaching a lot and uh, uh, I also remember during school or while studying for CA I got an opportunity I always started teaching something to my friends if they had doubts. So I think uh, from there I got that interest and uh, <coughs> that's how we started teaching in a small way. And uh, just last year we opened up a new office and uh, it has been going good uh, because of COVID of course there was uh, a little uh, dip in our uh, work but then uh, now students are coming and it it's it's fun and actually it is a great experience uh, to see uh, new students uh, starting the ca career and uh, and and you know you you see yourself sometimes in those students how you started and then the metamorphosis as you complete the course so uh, yes teaching is uh, very satisfying and uh, i've been enjoying with the journey since the last 6 uh, 7 years and uh, alongside we also practice uh, so which is primarily into uh, the tax uh, into tax practice <coughs> so yeah this is about me and uh, i really hope all of you enjoy there today and uh, i hope to join online uh, Uh, so yeah wish everyone all of my colleagues there all the best and uh, yeah this is from me bye hello and namaste for everyone who is here today i am very happy that brahma and co visa is organizing this alumni meet and providing an excellent opportunity for all of us to meet personally and uh, virtually my sincere thanks to shri sita ramay garu and ramna rao garu for what i am today and for being my gurus and imbibing great professional and personal skills in a, in me i can say that i can never forget our gurus and uh, brahma and company vizag in my lifetime my name is sagar kota and i i did my article ship in brahma and company under our beloved uh, shri ramna rao garu i currently work for an indian based business house rani group in the united states and i have been living here for the uh, past 6 years with my family and i am a certified public accountant cpa in the us today i want to talk to you about intelligent technologies in accounting and audit i can say that the accounting profession has becoming more global with the rise of technology things like automation mini bots machine learning and adaptive intelligence are becoming part of finance team intelligent technologies may seem new to us being a traditional accountants but many companies have already started using basic automation and accounting processes accounting tasks and processes that machines can do or streamline are being automated as advanced systems handle repetitive work humans will deal with more of the analysis and becoming the crucial link between the data and the clients technology will continue to impact the role of the accountants and the demand for accountants in the future i will briefly talk to you about some of the emerging technologies cloud computing cloud computing is experiencing a rapid growth as a new intelligent technology such as the internet of things artificial intelligence and machine learnings are integrated into the cloud it gives a real time access of information and data to everyone and everywhere automated accounting tasks labor and 
time intensive facets of accounting such as audits, banking, payroll, reconciliations are quickly becoming fully automated. Use of robotic process automations called RPA to reduce processing times of accountants and they are vastly used in accounting and for audits. Blockchain technology. While blockchain may have gained popularity due to Bitcoin, which is a digital currency, its applications have vastly increased. Blockchain enables users to access ledgers in real time, as well as create smart contracts and record transactions. It's no surprise that this system is catching the notice of accountants. In fact, many accounting firms already implemented blockchain, including the big fours. Undoubtedly, the accountants of the future will need to be technologically savvy to evolve with the changing industry. As automation frees up time previously spent on mundane tasks, accounting professionals can focus on higher level analytical skills. I once again thank Brahma and company team for giving me this opportunity to connect with you all. Wish to see more such events. Thank you. Jai Hind. Regional office 
takes care of the sales and distribution and marketing of of the entire FMCG portfolio which the company had. I used to directly uh, deal with the VAT department here in Maharashtra and uh, all the assessments. Then there were logistics. And there was normal accounting, and it was it was a general uh, regional office kind of a role. Having worked there for two three years, okay, so this was a change in my life. The first experience in audit was entire traveling every two three months, coming to Bombay. Oh my God, I never expected such a bhago. Uh, if I can use Hindi words, such bhag door wali life. Uh, here people get up at like six a.m. in the morning and go to bed at twelve uh, at night. And again, the cycle continues for five to six days a week. Sunday is the only day when Akka Mumbai sleeps for half day, and then the routine continues from the next Monday. So traveling is a hectic thing here because we have to travel by local trains. People don't have to get in or get out; they just get in automatically and get off automatically. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So this was a bit of uh, personal life, and I have to also adjust in a. Uh, joint family and I must tell you that uh, my husband is really supportive about my professional career and so is my family I live with my parents in law and I have my husband's siblings also living together so we are a large family based in bombay uh, having worked with uh, itc i realized that you know time is essential for you as a personal life because in itc it was a very hectic job uh, as i said there were there was no personal time at all so i thought uh, i should move on although it's a very wonderful organization to work but somewhere there has to be a limit to uh, having uh, personal time so i switched to an mnc it is glaxo pharmaceuticals i got the role of a finance business partner it was similar to the role with itc it was a finance uh, support function for the commercial team since it was a corporate uh, job as in the head office based job it was more dealing with the top management preparing reports preparing mis understanding the pnl doing the brand analysis and brand profitability and it was more of a head office kind of a corporate role related to sales and marketing and uh, yes it was also it also involved budgeting and a, a lot of stuff and then another turn in my life god's blessing of a precious uh, baby i was blessed with a baby boy it was wonderful uh, i think it was a miracle moment for me miracle moment for me when i was blessed with a child he uh, it was a learning for me as well as uh, for my husband and for my child being uh, his name is rishabh he is 5 years now and uh, having worked i mean i continued my work even after my baby was born for some months but then i realized that it's not i was not very happy going again early in the morning even though it was not that a hectic job but somewhere i thought with that i should add flexibility to my work for which i quit my job again and this time i thought any other job here in bombay would be such and instead of running around behind money i think i should add flexibility and i started my ca practice as a practice in chartered accountant i had to begin with my own networking and uh, god's grace every time uh, because of my connections that i have in mumbai because of my colleagues who who were there with me in itc who have who are now working in various other large co corporates uh, are uh, i mean i network with them so i get assignments from these organizations only on a uh, outsourced kind of a work whenever they are having or whenever they are overloaded with work or whenever they need resources when they are short of resources they they do this outsourcing of engagement of accounting reconciliations and such because i yes so i get these kind of work from uh, companies like marico itc gsk uh, till december 21 i was doing this work again god's blessing i am blessed with my second child she is ananya she is 8 months now and she is another precious gift from god last 6 months or so i have been uh, enjoying motherhood again and uh, yes i am gearing up to begin work again with my flexibility 
I wish I could really attend this event. It was a brief summary of what I have done uh, right from qualifying CA till 2022. It's been 12 years now and uh, I'm really grateful to God, thankful to Him for this wonderful life and uh, wonderful children, wonderful family, friends, colleagues. And uh, I really wish I was there at the event, but nevertheless, I'm sure the message is communicated. We are very thankful to CA Aditi Bharadwaj, CA Sagar Kota and CA Nutan Agarwal for making their presence felt even though they couldn't make it to the event. Now I request CA G Lakshmi Kanta ma'am who was in charge of indirect taxation in, uh, in, the, in the past. My mistake, who was in charge of direct taxation in our firm in the past to address the gathering. Hello. See, many of uh, my students were thinking that I was article student of Brahmaya, but I am not. I was uh, my I did my articles under C K Parvati Kumar Garu, Raven Kumar. See, but my association with Bra Brahmaya and Co is both personal and professional. On a prof personal friend. Uh, my father-in-law's late C. Ravindranath Garu was classmate and friend of Sitra Mai Garu. And so I know before I uh, joined with Brahmaya. And my husband was, uh, husband is uh, uh, ex-student of Brahmaya. Yeah, he's here. <laughs> so later I was auditor of Brahmaya. So I worked with uh, BHPV, now merged with BHEL. So for 11, almost 11 years, I was auditee and client as a ta tax uh, seeker. So the, that time I was uh, having very good experience with Raman Rogar. So uh, I used to attend for tax audit. And then uh, Mr. Babu for uh, tax consultancy. I used to look after uh, taxation matters in BHPV and so both, so that time I got very confidence in taxation. Before that, I used to have a lot of fear with con, uh, taxation. Because of uh, both of them, I was, uh, I was so much comfortable with uh, taxation and got a lot of confidence. So later, when I decided to quit my job from BHPV, then I we came out along with my partner Jayashree so we started our own firm. Then uh, Mr. Ba uh, Babugara has uh, called us and uh, asked us to join with them. So I have jo both of us joined two in 2004, Mrs. Brahma and Co. And we were there for a very long time, for 11 years. And uh, that experience was uh, so nice. And now whatever I am, it is because of that 11 years. So I gained a lot of experience in Ramaya and uh, Raman Rao Garu used to give me the total control of direct taxes. He never uh, uh, interfered in uh, my way of uh, working and all. Only he used to give me guidance whenever I sought. So that way I'm blessed. So that way, then uh, because of that, now I'm very confidently handling my cases. And even Mr. Sunil Garu also used to advise me whenever uh, I was asking. And apart from all that, Koteshwar Rao Garu, Hyderabad. Port Trust, and especially Port Trust. I gained a lot of experience in Port Trust appeals and assessments. So that time, Koteshwar Rao Garu used to come, and even all my drafts and all, he used to wet. So that way, I got very rich experience in drafting uh, for assessments and appeals. 
So that way I'm always indebted to Brahma and Co. So uh, more than is nothing to say. Whatever I am now here because of my article ship under uh, Parati Kumar Garu and Brahmega, Brahma and Co, especially Raman Rao Garu, Babu Garu. So I'm very much thankful to all of them. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for taking out time and coming here to share your experiences with us. Now I request C.A.K. Narayana Rao Garu, who has once worked as an audit manager in our firm, to address the gathering. Good afternoon all. Uh, C.V. Ramana Rao Garu has strictly uh, given me ultimatum, not to exceed five minutes. Uh, okay, I respect his uh, command. And now coming back, say actually, I was uh, very, in one sentence, I was uh, associated with uh, Brahman Company for four or five years and uh, working as an audit and uh, uh, my mentor was uh, Sachinan Garu and C.V. Ramana Rao Garu. But more than that, Sitaravi <laughs> Garu and family and our family, we are uh, family friends for more than 40 years and Sitaravi Garu is our family auditor also. And so that's uh, more uh, association. Now, uh, you see, recently, I do not want to go into my history and geography. Uh, right now, I'm showing some interest in this uh, uh, fraud uh, thing and I did some FFAD of our institute also and successfully passed. <laughs> so, uh, can you show the thing? See, uh, coming straight to the point, uh, see, uh, go slower. Hmm. That, yeah, I don't need all this. Eh? Hmm. <laughs> the thing is, uh, see, why fraud? Ever? I am not going into details so the f about the fraud. It is a big, huge subject. Uh, coming back straight to the fraud awareness, uh, I is more intended to the youngsters because uh, those are the people, uh, both students and uh, young uh, chat accountants, who are to carry forward the word uh, uh, regarding this one. And also be careful in your uh, respective audits and all that one as a profession also, because uh, auditors are also made scapegoats uh, when a fraud or something is discovered uh, uh, subsequent to the audit, unfortunately. Sometimes, uh, of course, unless otherwise proved, you are not guilty. <coughs> now, coming back to the uh, yeah, next slide, please. You see, uh, any of you are a uh, 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 victim of fraud or a scam? Hello? Huh? Uh, that's what that's what I'm saying. 60% of the Indians do not uh, tell about it. Okay? They just remain cool. And uh, next, please. And uh, uh, only 17% of the 40% who, who venture to report will receive some or uh, part of the money that they lost. So that is the truth about these frauds. Okay? Uh, next, uh, you see, it is uh, always a cat and mouse game. Okay? Pili uh, Alka. Uh, please keep that right. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, Billy is the fraudster and that fellow is individual to corporate. Ultimately, the cat will eat the rat, but uh, even the cat also gets caught. Uh, like we can see from Harshad Mehta to PNB scam and uh, other things, uh, so many in the last uh, two decades. Okay? And so it's always uh, who is smarter than us. Always remember the fraudster is always one step ahead of us. He is always smarter. Okay? And now, uh, why these frauds occur? Why these frauds occur? Because of greed, ignorance, and negligence. Okay? Uh, next, please. Uh, see, greed. We are, people want more money, more money, more money. People don't stop. Fraudster won't stop, and neither the victim won't stop. Okay? Till he is victimized. Okay? If somebody says, I will give you 24%, uh, he will take out his hard out uh, earnings and then stand in the queue with an application. Afterwards, he will cry. Okay? Uh, that, uh, 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 previous one, please. Uh, and so, uh, it is greed for more money. Similarly, the same thing uh, from starting from employee to corporate, even managers, even management also. Okay? They go to any extent, cook the books and all that one, we know it very well. And then, uh, uh, till they are caught, till the fraud is caught, like in Sachem and, uh, and Ron in those days and all these things. Okay, next, next please. Ignorance. 
Ignorance is another thing, like uh, not able to use phone, not uh, using the uh, ATM properly, not uh, sharing the PIN and everything. Uh, yeah, still people do that one. Uh, is it working? Yeah, yeah, because my sound, my voice itself is a bit uh, loud, sorry. <laughs> ah, so, ignorance. Uh, of course, ignorance is of uh, no excuse, you have to be careful. You cannot say, I do not know how to use it. Uh, can you just give the card to your uh, next fellow and say, can you use my card and draw 10,000? You will draw 10,000 after, and afterwards you will scam the thing and then you will remove the other money. By the time you go home, you get a message. Okay? And so ignorance is of no excuse. Uh, next, please. And negligence. It is negligence from uh, individuals to uh, corporates and employees and uh, then finally the professionals. See, there's uh, sometimes the corporate frauds and are also uh, happening either due to negligence, but of course most of them are due to hand and glow. Hand and glow. That means uh, joining with the management. They, those things will happen. And uh, individuals and all, as I already told you, they are not careful. Uh, you get SMS, you get uh, public announcements and all that. People hardly pay any attention to these things and keep on committing their mistakes and losing money either keeping quiet or the crying. Okay? And then, uh, see, why all these frauds are coming in the first place? Development of technology. See, always it is uh, two-pronged. Okay, development of technology we, is also uh, both a boon and a bane. Okay, and so first, uh, if all of us are using it for a purpose, the frauds are using for their purpose. And so naturally, uh, they are also, all these uh, uh, social media and all these things. Next, next, next slide, please. You see, all these things, uh, all the youngsters, uh, they keep on playing on Instagram, Facebook and all that. As long as uh, they share properly and carefully, not allowing everybody to join the thing or thing. But sometimes they are get carried forward, unnecessarily they poke somebody, that fellow may be misrepresenting himself, he or she, and gets caught and there are so many stories. Now I don't have time to tell all that. Okay? And so, social media one has to be careful. Whereas we keep on posting, some people will say, I, I started in New York, then I am here, then I am here, now we are in Dubai, now I am coming to my home. Why all that one? That's a mistake. Okay? Uh, so now, uh, see, COVID-19 uh, COVID has also increased uh, frauds. Uh, next one, please. Along with uh, working from home culture. See, this working from home and uh, this COVID-19 also have tremendously increased uh, the frauds in the last two years in all spheres of uh, life, okay? From the smallest to the highest frauds. Because of uh, uh, even uh, fraudsters are also working from home, okay, coolly. And so that's a problem because they're always smarter than us. Uh, and so uh, that is something uh, from ACFP, the 3.7 trillion each year, you can put the uh, number of zeros and multiply with uh, 70 or 80, okay? So much uh, monies are lost and it still continues. And uh, they are conducting uh, the ACFU, the Associated Certified Fraud uh, uh, Association. Every time they conduct Fraud Awareness Week and in November also it is there. Uh, and, uh, a previous one, please. Oh, okay, next. And so, the dear students and all, you see, the thing is, I am more focusing on the youngsters, uh, young members and students for their future guidance, that we have to carry forward the word to uh, everywhere, from educational institutions to corporates to conducting workshops at regular intervals to pass a message. Because whatever comes in paper, whatever comes in SMS and all these things, people don't pay attention unless they are clearly explained everything about the thing. And so that is the bottom line of the thing that we should conduct uh, uh, because we are all accounting and uh, uh, professionals in the thing. Uh, we are the best people to convey these things to the public and uh, whatever level. So, uh, the thing is, you know, uh, it's a very famous thing. Yeah, there's no point in uh, crying after uh, spilled milk. Okay? Once the milk is spilled, uh, that's end of it. Okay? There's no point in crying. After losing our money uh, because of negligence or carelessness or uh, things, there's no point in crying. Better to keep quiet. That's why 60% of Indians do not report a fraud. Whereas in US and all, 100% report. That is a problem. Okay? 40% report, 17% recover. Something. And so, uh, 
that's all uh, last please I, because he strictly told me five minutes okay at four minutes okay so uh, with this uh, few words on uh, my pet subject uh, fraud awareness uh, I close this session I thank you all for your patient hearing and uh, hope it is of some value to you and uh, I thank uh, Ramana Rao Garu for giving me this brief opportunity and putting a knife on me to conclude it within five minutes. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Narendra. The point is, I have taken the liberty because we, have, we happen to be colleagues. We are colleagues. I have taken the liberty of shortcutting you. Huh? Because, uh, uh, sorry. Huh? Then uh, now it is two, and we decided that two would be the lunch time. The point is, the sooner you come, the post lesson session will come in. And there are a, there is a surprise item, which uh, was Mamsi Dasri, Mamsi Das, the coordinator. So you all want to see, enjoy the surprise, surprise event. Of course. You have your prior, prior commitment. That is up to you. And then, so I request us to have a very, very, very short lunch. What do you call that? Working lunch. 30 minutes. Huh? Mid Pakada. Rundu, Rundu contest night. See, the point is, Akkadu Kuchin Matla de Vadulu, Ikkadu Kuchin Matla de Vadulu. In the meeting, Alu Kantal Kumali Vilpoval. But so says Tarman. Uh, I, I, uh, and then uh, uh, Vivek, how are you Vivek? Vivek, uh, he is our uh, alumni member, uh, Brahmine Company Chennai, and he was the past chairman of Vishakhapatnam branch in the 2006, in February 2006. That is in our installation meeting. I, I remain reminded the com committee, uh, at all other uh, branch, that there is a long pending uh, uh, rec uh, rec rec request from a mine company for construction for construct. mine company will con will, con will uh, be allowed to construct a, that, uh, a, a something to the institute infrastructure in the name of Brahmagar. And he took it immediately in March, March 2006. Ah, May, May, the work started in May 2006 and completed in December. And then the, the, you, those three photos you see. <laughs> the, see, the point is that, that photos are there, that uh, Brahmaya Memorial, uh, Centenary Memorial Hall, and then the, the point is, he put it. Alish Roy say, "Kuch ka inka ek kuch na chanta re." Arey kada mundu mano mo Brahman company wala, kuch ka chinda ek kado shoot down kuno. But he made it a entire floor now, which is used daily by the students and members. So, wait, huh? Now we'll break for lunch, working lunch. It all depends. Uh, the sooner you come, you'll the sooner you'll enjoy the surprise. <laughs>